Ion exchange chromatography. What is it? How does it work? And why is it useful? Ion exchange chromatography, or IEX, is used to purify proteins based on charge. Pure proteins are vital for successful experiments, and therefore this methodology is very useful. Ion exchange chromatography separates proteins or any biomolecules based on the differences in their net charge at a particular pH. Protein charge depends on the number and type of ionizable amino acid side chain groups. Each protein has an isoelectric point, Pi, which is the pH where its overall net charge is equal to zero. If you are confused by isoelectric point, I have a video on the topic which I link by the end of this video. In short, in a buffered solution which has a pH lower than the protein's Pi, the protein is positively charged or protonated and will subsequently bind to the negatively charged functional group of a cation exchange resin. In a buffered solution above the protein's Pi, the protein is negatively charged or deprotonated and will therefore bind to the positively charged functional groups of an anion exchange resin. The reason why it has to do with the structure of proteins and by extension amino acids and when these accept versus donate protons, in what conditions they do so. Again, this is further explained in my video about the isoelectric point, so check that out at the end if you want to know more about that. Another essential instrument to understand how IEX works is these ion exchange racing beads just mentioned. Ion exchange racines have charged functional groups bound to racing beads that are either positively or negatively charged. These racines are called cations if they are positive or anions if they are negatively charged. These can either be weak or strong depending on what functional groups are used to make them. To further clarify how this system works, imagine a cat and a sheep walking across a grassy field. In this case the cat is the more negatively charged protein, the sheep is the more positively charged protein and the grassy field is the negatively charged anion exchange racines all around in the environment. The sheep will be constantly distracted by all of the tasty grass and just stop and eat it while the cat just keeps on walking. If we measure how far they have traveled after let's say 10 minutes, the cat has probably walked a lot further than the sheep unless the cat just decides to lay down in the sun or something, of course, cats be lazy. In a similar way, the proteins that have the strongest electromagnetic attraction to the surrounding racing beads will move the slowest. Let us look at the workflow of ion exchange chromatography. In this example, the ion exchange chromatography column is going to be filled with anion exchange racings, so negative environment. It's going to be a negatively charged environment. Therefore, the more positive the protein, the greater the attraction to these beads and the slower it will move. First, we insert the sample into the column. Second, proteins will collect at the top of the column. Third, the different proteins will start to separate from one another based on their charge. Here again we will see that the negatively charged proteins will move the quickest since the environment is negatively charged as well while the most positive proteins will move the slowest since they are attracted to their environment. Fourth, proteins can be collected in order of charge from the most negative to the most positive. Fifth, we can also use an illusion in order for us to speed up the collection of the final protein, which is the one that is the most attracted to the negatively charged beads and will therefore barely move at all. This can be a salt solution that disrupts the attraction between our protein and the negatively charged beads, effectively displacing the protein so that it can continue moving through the column for us. Okay, next let us also look at the pros and cons of ion exchange chromatography. IEX pros include that it permits a high flow rate, it concentrates the samples, it has a high yield, and its buffers are non-denaturing. However, its cons include that the sample must be loaded at low ionic strength. Also, small changes in pH can greatly alter bonding between the racing beads 
and the proteins in our sample. Finally, particle size also greatly influences resolution. But maybe you do not want to separate your proteins based on charge, but based on size instead. Well then, you need to check out this video where I discuss size exclusion chromatography. As promised, you can also click the video where I explain the isoelectric point displayed on the screen right now. I really recommend you check this one out, considering how important that whole phenomenon is for this type of chromatography that we just discussed. So it's really going to allow you to better understand how this ion exchange chromatography works. Until next time.